What's going on guys? Today I'm in Tuscola County, Michigan. And this is Pine Grove Cemetery. This video is gonna be not an easy one for me to do guys because this is a very, very sad, um, tragic story that happened to this uh, little girl that is buried here. And usually in my videos I know what to say, I know what to do and stuff, but this time I don't. I don't really know what to say. I don't really you know, know what to do. I'm just gonna do what I do what I do guys and hopefully I can do the best I can to tell you guys the story about this little girl that was murdered Kayland Rowland was shot and killed at Buell Elementary in Mount Morris Township by a six-year-old classmate who found the gun in a shoebox at his uncle's house. The owner of the gun pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. The boy was never charged. The prosecutor at the time remembers the case as though one could ever forget, and he tells TV5's Jamie Sherrod the U.S. needs to take a tougher stand on guns. The community was traumatized by the shooting death of Kayla Rowland. They, they couldn't make sense of it. In February of 2000, a school shooting that made national news happened in Mount Morris Township at Buell Elementary. And a six-year-old classmate brought a gun to school, took it to school, and shot and killed her in a classroom. Kayla Rowland was just six years old. The incident leaving her family, the community, and nation grieving. This hit the uh, headline news. It was this was national news uh, when this incident happened to this little girl. I'm having a hard time, kind of with this little bit, guys, because you know my emotions get to me and stuff. But this one's a very sad one. I've been wanting to come and visit her gravesite for a long time. Now I got my opportunity and I just want to tell you guys her story, but you know me, I'm going to get emotional, but it's a very sad one. It needs to be told. Her name was Kayla Rowland. She was a six-year-old from Mount Morris Township, Michigan. She was fatally shot on February 29th, 2000 by her six-year-old male classmate. The killing drew worldwide attention due to the fact of how old they were. They were both six years old when this happened. Kayla was the youngest school shooting victim in the US history until 2012. On February 29, 2000, I'm not going to name the the person that did this to her either, guys. So if you guys want to look that stuff up, it's all over the internet. You'll be able to find his name and things like that. Because he was only six years old at the time. And in his uh, life, a lot of tragic things happened in his life with his parents, his father. His father was in prison and 
you know, a lot of messed up things happened uh, in, in this kid's world. That's all I'm going to say about that. You know, um, if you guys want to look that stuff up, you can. On February 29th, 2000, the boy had brought the gun, a gun, along with a knife to school that day. The day it happened. Um, I have no idea what, you know, he, supposedly um, the story I heard was that he showed the gun or pointed the gun at a, another student and this was before uh, he shot Kayla. Um, I have no idea why that I just don't understand how the uh, parent, not parents, but the teachers and everybody uh, were not notified then and there about it before things got worse. I don't understand any of that. I don't understand it. Later in the day, during a change of classes, I should say that uh, the day before uh, the incident, um, he tried to kiss Kayla, and I guess that she uh, turned him down and told him, "No, I do not want to kiss. Don't, tr you know." So I guess uh, while the students were there, that kind of embarrassed him. But the day after is when he brought the gun along with a knife to school. Later in the, the day, during a change of classes, he said to Kayla, I don't like you. Her, her response was, so? And that aggravated the boy. So in the presence of a teacher and 22 students, This six-year-old boy pulled the trigger. The bullet entered her right arm and traveled through her vital organs, including her heart.
I remember going into the room when they said that she was dead, and I remember looking at her, and she was white. And I just kept looking at her, and I'm like, Kayla, you're playing a joke on us. Just wake up. Kayla, just wake up. And she didn't. On February 29th, 2000, Leap Day, Kayla Rowland, the six-year-old tomboy with blue mischievous eyes, had become the nation's youngest school shooting victim. Her classmate, also six, had taken a gun from his crack-dealing uncle's home and shot her at Buell Elementary School in Mount Morris Township. I'm convinced the kid went, took that gun and with the intent he was going to kill somebody. He was mad, according to reports, that Kayla would not let him kiss her on the playground the day before. Kids at school... They had teased him, and I think he was upset. And, you know, I think he had the idea that, you know, this is the way I can get even. Flowers and candles have already been placed at the entrance of the school in memory of the six-year-old girl. Above the door, it reads, we love our children and we care for their safety. But the words were not enough to save little Kayla Rowland. Kayla became the face of a national outcry for school safety and gun control. The young victim's mom, Veronica McQueen, turned grief into a cause, meeting with President Bill Clinton and speaking about gun control at a Million Moms March in Washington, D.C. Three years ago, she took her own life. But it basically destroyed her to the point where she wanted to die, you know, drugs, alcohol, anything she could do to take away the pain. And I don't think she ever really got over that. Jonathan Allen, Kayla's brother, was a fourth grader at the time at Buell Elementary. I remember actually hearing the gunshot because it sounded like a chair hit a wall. The boy who fired that shot was never criminally charged. There's a presumption that a, a child six years old is not criminally responsible and cannot form the intent to kill necessary to have a criminal prosecution. The boy's uncle's roommate got prison time for allowing the boy access to the gun. The Genesee County Sheriff feared that the boy would kill again. I think it would be a great case study. You know, here's what happened and followed his life to, to today to see where he's at and what he's doing. And I have absolutely no idea where he's even living. Records obtained by Target 8 show the boy and his brother were raised in foster care. Court records show he got into trouble when he was 18 for a theft and a break-in in Bay City. But nothing in the eight years since. He was last living with his mom near Flint. While Kayla's mom was able to forgive, her dad, Ricky Rowland, is not. I figure one day he's going to, uh, the guy upstairs is going to give him what he deserves. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'll never forgive the guy. I, I mean, that's, that's, that, I don't, that won't happen. This is the only picture I have of my sister. But Kayla's sister and brother say they've learned to forgive after learning about the shooter's childhood. And now all I can say is that I forgive him and I really hope he's doing something with his life. And I really hope he's doing something to better himself. And I hope he's not letting this make his character. Like, I don't want what he did to define who he is. After he shot her... He threw the gun into the trash and ran to a nearby restroom. He was found in a corner by a teacher and was soon taken into police custody. I brought Kayla some flowers.
just remember Kayla you are never ever forgotten about everybody loves you you're still remembered this is what I always say to people you know um Be good to your kids. Tell your kids every single day how much you love them. No matter what they do, no matter of anything they do, just let your kids know that you love them so much because time is precious. You never know when it's going to be it. Be good to your children. Kayla was a fun, loving person. And she did not deserve to uh, die the way she died. So let's please keep her memory alive. Because you never know. Your kids could be with you one day. And they could be gone the next. <laughs>